Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. It's comments day today, so I'm going to be reacting to some of your um, comments that you've left on my earlier videos this week. There's loads of them, and it's going to be brilliant, so I'm really excited. Let's get stuck straight into it. Justin Hawkins Rides Again Again So the first thing I'm going to do is say uh, a super thanks to the super thanks people. Um, Ashlyn Jofel, thank you. Uh, Cashel O'Reilly, thanks again. Um, Simola77, Sean C., Tommy Kraus, Busy Flusterer, Julian Bernan, Andy Jones, Bryce Sweet, Amanda Lorian, Matt Romania, Michael James Gilbert, Jeffu TV, Vidas Rialka, Alessio Scatto, Ross Hudson, De Noit, De Squidgel, George Farrer, Wicker Mann, uh, Michael Ellis, Hans Bayer, Bayer, <laughs> I'm murdering some of these, I'm really sorry, um, John S3, Jamie Lomas, Jigs111, Chris John, Kendrick Watterson, Kyla J, Ken C, Swedge Mutant, Stevie Urkel, Neil Stimson and Witch Haunts Ghost. Thank you so much, guys. I really, really appreciate you. Um, right, let's get into the comments. Unwitting Sweater says, Question, Linkin Park and The Darkness both won a Kerrang! Award in the same year. Uh, there was a rumour that Chester would not pose in the photo with you for the cover. <laughs> he is right at the edge of the photo. Any truth in that? Let me have a look at this photo. Um, I wouldn't know whether Chester was reluctant to pose in the photo with me, and I wouldn't have cared either um we won two awards that year i think it was best live best who i don't even remember but um those are the ones that were actually stolen from us by um by a um <laughs> an ex-tour manager of ours um it looks like chester's actually in that picture sometimes they do like um a, an ensemble photograph where like everybody is photographed either in pairs or as small groups or even individually in some instances and then they use photoshop to create like um an ensemble of photo but it looks to me like he's leaning in he's actually in there i remember standing next to james hetfield because that's not something you ever forget um and he's holding a kerrang award which is made of clear clear lucite and you can clearly see chester behind it so i would imagine he he was actually in the photo um and if he didn't want to be in it then he made a mistake and lent in um which is a schoolboy error um but then again you know we were all young in those days weren't we so who knows Thanks for your question. Anyway, who does anyone listen, who does anyone listen to anything? <laughs> I know why this one's in here. So, SideQuest asks, who does anyone listen to anything? Indeed. Who does anyone listen to anything? Yeah. Food for four. Jamie Lomas, uh, with a, another um, super thanks, thank you. Has there ever been a time in your musical career where you felt things were getting too serious and taking the fun out of what you do? If so, how did you address it? Thanks for the excellent content. Your natural po positivity is something we can all learn from. Thanks, Jamie. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that... It's not all fun and games, you know. It can't be really, but I think there is a there is a, as you sort of allude to there, there there comes a time when you're always sort of taking stock, and then you've got to sort of look at what the balance of, you know, what's what's a pleasure and what's a chore, and you you do try and keep it keep it so it's pleasure heavy, because otherwise, what we're we doing here, you know. As long as you're making each other laugh, you know, if you're in a band and, you, and you've got people around you who, who you're having a laugh with, it's, it's all right, really. But I think when that goes away and the relationships that you have uh, are strained because of the workload, that's, that's when it feels like the sort of chores are consuming the, the passion and the thing that makes you actually want to do it in the first place. And that has happened to me before. I took a few years off. But then again, there's a few other things that I needed to address happening in those days as well. But thanks for your question, Jamie. Anyway, keep an eye on yourself and just try and have a laugh. If you can't have a laugh, then you've got to change something. Sometimes the inevitable is you've got to do something else. But, um, you know, life's too short, isn't it? Kendrick 
Watterson's uh, with a super thanks. Cheers for that. Um, how do you avoid sounding samey in songwriting? Having a style is good, but a rut is boring. Yeah, I know what you mean. Sometimes you end up sort of, you can feel yourself sort of developing patterns and, and then you sort of, you know where you're going to go after you've heard a chord or a couple of chords. You sort of, you can feel yourself aiming for something and you've just got to be aware of that, I think. And sometimes it helps to sort of write a song on a different instrument, like something that you're unfamiliar with. Uh, I often do that, like get the synthesizer out because then I'll hit a chord by accident. Um, but it's important to try and surprise yourself and if you can feel yourself just doing the same thing all the time, just stop doing that and do something else instead. you just got to be self-aware enough to recognise it and it sounds like you are, Kendrick, so good luck. So John, John's three with a, with a super thanks, I, mercy, um, asks, what did Justin Hawkins first ride and where to does he ride again? Love the channel, carry on sir, we'll keep watching. Where to do I ride again? Nowhere special. Nowhere special sounds pretty good to me. Um, <clears throat> anyway, sorry. The Squidgel says, uh, since you are on the record for purchasing the guitar stand, <laughs> here's something to put towards it. I really appreciate that. Thanks. At the moment, I'm using this um, upholstered chair, which is doing the trick, actually. I mean, it's it's definitely protecting it, but... And actually, it's it's around about hand height, but I, I, I will buy something purpose purpose uh, built for 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 this exact thing. Um, and Julian Burnham again says, "Justin, we love you, but please buy a stand for your acoustic guitar." You're right. You're right. I I appreciate it. Thank you. Richard Wilson um, says, "Has there ever been a case of another artist sampling any of the Darkness's tracks without permission?" <laughs> well, it's funny you should say that. It did happen once. Um, that, in fact, there was. I think it was um, actually uh, uh, there was a televisual, a, a kids program on Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network. I can't remember which one it was. Um, and I was watching it thinking, hang on, that's that riff is very, very familiar sounding. And um, I think there was a cease and desist or pay up kind of thing issued. And it, you know, it does happen. Um I, that, I don't think that was a sample, though, in that instance. I think that was actually just somebody had basically just ripped us off and it was, I wasn't having that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think there's ever... I mean, there, was some, there was something on... Um, I think there was something on TikTok at one point with um, somebody using a Darkness song to sort of say something rude about a lady part. Or, but I'm not sure. I didn't see any of those, but uh, heard a rumor about it, and then started to see it being collected on my by my publishing company. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I'm not even sure if permission is necessary in those in those cases. I just don't know how this stuff works anymore. I'm, I'm here to be educated. Um, so anyway, thanks a lot for all of your comments and questions and suggestions and criticisms. I really appreciate all of you. Um, keep coming back. Justin Hawkins writes again. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and watch one of these two videos. Cheers, guys. <laughs>